to another episode of HVAC system design uh, with the channel of the world of building design. Uh, in this tutorial, I would like to share with you some uh, information about the Carrier Hub software, specifically uh, in the system tab where we selected uh, our previous example. Uh, where there was an office space with the uh, rooftop unit uh, which is serving that space and uh, we had only one zone and in this tutorial we want to go back to that same example looking at the, the system tab in the carrier hub software and understand what are the other parameters that we need to adjust or determine for the software so that we could get the favorable reporting or result from the input data um, so some of the parameters that we're going to look at in this tutorial would be basically the thermostat condition for the heating or cooling mode and what is the throttling range of the thermostat and if there are additional extra heating in the space uh, how we have to put that data into into the carrier hub or uh, you know which one of the parameters we have to activate um, we're also going to look at the zones and how the zones play a role you know, in putting data and how we have to uh, select the zones based on different spaces. If we have like one unit with one thermostat, how we select the zones and if we have multi uh, thermostat, for example, in the event that we have selected the VAV boxes, which uh, require their own thermostat, how you have to determine multiple zones and dedicate different uh, VAV terminal units to different spaces. So we're going to look at all of these aspects in this tutorial. Um, if you haven't watched this channel before, uh, please then look at the other videos. There are multiple videos about the Rabbit MEP where you can uh, learn about designing the mechanical system in a 3D modeling uh, environment. And there are multiple of videos related to this area. You can, you can look at the other um, playlists and, and watch them. Um, there are some uh, preliminary videos related to the sprinkler system design and modeling. Uh, you can also refer to all of those. Um, I have recorded some other videos uh, on introduction of um, some of the major HVAC equipment manufacturers. We have looked at uh, other softwares and, uh, and we are continuing on the Carrier Hub software in this series of tutorial. If you haven't subscribed in this channel of the World of Building Design, please go ahead and subscribe. In this channel, we would focus on the HVAC system design techniques and tutorials. The focus of this uh, tutorials would be based on the codes, the standards, and the practice in the North America. So thank you very much for watching this video. I will take you to the Carrier Hub software environment so that we could go over some of the features that we just discussed. So in this tutorial, as we discussed, the uh, example that we are talking about is the, um, a, a small office space with one rooftop unit as its main uh, source of heating and cooling. So this rooftop unit, as you can see, is a single zone uh, uh, constant air volume system. So basically, in this system, you only have one uh, thermostat serving all other spaces. So when we are in the, uh, when we are in the uh, system tab, uh, on the carrier software. Uh, if you double click on the RTU number one, which we created before, we get into this air system property. And uh, in the air system property, as you can see, we have determined uh, the equipment type is a package rooftop unit. Air system type is constant air volume, single zone. If you go in here, and remember we discussed about, there are many other uh, type of equipment that you can select from depending on your design. Um, so um, this is not a variable air volume system or variable air volume or variable temperature. It's just a constant air volume unit and it's um, controlled by one thermostat only. So, and number of zone, as you can see, it's only one zone. So when we go to the other tabs, Remember that we talked about the other features or parameters uh, for the um, heating and cooling processes that we have to take into account and determine the carrier hub software 
We talked about the ventilation uh, and also the central cooling, heating, uh, supply fan, duct, um, you know, parameters that we have to fill up. And the reason why we see the check marks in front of these areas is only because the constant air volume, um, you know, requires this level of information provided. If you would have selected an air handling unit, for instance, uh, it was uh, more complicated. We might need it to use a pre-cooling coil or pre-heating coil uh, or ex uh, humidification for our system. And that's all, um, you know, subjects of the other tutorials in the future for this channel. Um, but um, in this tutorial, we're focusing only on the single rooftop unit with one thermostat. So in the, once we determine this system components information, uh, which we discussed in the previous carrier hub tutorial, um, we go to this tab, which is a zone component. So basically, all of our spaces that we have determined in our space tab, as you can see on the left-hand side, would uh, eventually shows up in this list of the spaces. And it's up to us to determine which one of these spaces goes under which zone. In this particular example, we have only one zone to dedicate all of this uh, you know, uh, spaces to that zone. Uh, but if we had multiple zones, we could pick and choose which one of the spaces goes under which zone number. So, so how it works is that you have to basically select all or a number of these spaces and then add by pressing on the add to bring it into the zone, a specific zone. So if you would have selected, if you go to this, you can see we have only one zone. So we could have multiple zones and dedicate multiple uh, you know, um, multiple of these spaces to those zones. So this tab pretty much uh, helping you to determine and allocate spaces to the zone. And what the zone means, zone means uh, a combination of spaces which are all controlled by one thermostat. It means that one thermostat governs the temperature uh, of that space. When the temperature goes below below the set point, uh, you you want to energize your heating to 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 increase the temperature of the space to meet the thermostat set point, and that's the opposite when you require the cooling for the space. So so when different spaces go under one zone, they can't ask for different uh, you know cooling or heating. They have to be all either heated or cooled. So that's, that's basically how the zone correlates with your system as a whole. And when we go to the second um, item here, which is thermostat, I'm going to click on that. And remember that these are all check marks, meaning that we have to fill up the information for this. In the thermostat section, you see that, again, uh, we are saying that all zones are set or are um, you know governed by one thermostat. So all zones stats set the same. It means that all thermostats, all zones um, have one thermostat. Because in this case, we have only one zone. And zone names, all zones, same thing. And now in these two parameters, cooling key stat set point and heating key stat set point. Basically, during the occupancy and on occupancy of our space, we want to determine what is our set point on our thermostat. In this case, and typically, we use a 75 degree Fahrenheit for our cooling set point and 72 degree Fahrenheit for our heating set point. And as you can see, this number is the same for the on occupancy during the cooling mode and 65 degree during the heating. So that's basically when we determine our schedule during the occupancy mode, the equipment works to maintain that 75 degree Fahrenheit when we are providing the cooling in the summertime to the space. And in the wintertime, you want to maintain the 72 degree in the space. And when the space is unoccupied, meaning that there's nobody in the office or um, the office is evacuated and it's outside of the working schedule, you want the 
the equipment or your rooftop unit only maintains the 65 degree Fahrenheit on the thermostat. We don't care about, uh, you know, 72 degree anymore because there's nobody in the space and we just want to maintain the, you know, some mild uh, heating, uh, you know, level in our space. So we, we set that to 65 degree during the on occupancy. And as you can see, there are other parameters here, such as uh, throttling range. Um, basically, this is mostly about if if your um, you know set point uh, is not met, or if the temperature is within one and a half degree interval uh, of the set point, you still don't uh, you know energize the equipment if. If, for example, we set our set point at 75 and uh, space temperature is 74, still we are not going to energize the rooftop unit to provide the cooling because the degree of uh, error is up to one and a half degree. So that's the throttling range that we are, we are looking at. This can be reduced. Uh, it means that if we change this to one degree, if the indoor temperature uh, becomes say 76 degree our rooftop unit starts up to decrease the space temperature to 75 but if we keep it at one and a half year traveling range and if our space is 76 degree our uh, equipment is not energized is not energized until the inside temperature becomes 76.5 then our rooftop unit energizes to bring down the temperature to 75 degrees. That's pretty much uh, the, the accuracy or it says the sensitivity of, of the, um, you know, the signal that is sent to the equipment for energization to maintain the thermostat set. Um, so for the diversity factor, I'm not gonna put anything or just change this. Um, you know, we don't have any exhaust airflow through this unit. We don't, uh, it's not a rooftop unit, so we don't put uh, any exhaust here. And um, same thing with the direct exhaust fan kilowatt. We don't, these, these are pretty much some of the information that, that is useful when you do the energy analysis, um, but I'm not gonna put anything in here. And for the thermostat schedule, so basically thermostat schedule can be, selected from here remember that it, it originally for the for the building occupancy uh, we can we could have different type of uh, 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 schedule determined for it um, but uh, in this case we just keep the fan thermostat schedule as it is and obviously for the unconditioned cooling if you want to condition your space during unoccupied you can keep this as available but if we don't want to provide any further cooling um, uh, during the unoccupancy. Uh, we can just simply put the not available in here. In the other tab that is supply terminals, because this is only a single constant volume unit, is not connected to any uh, variable air volume terminal unit. It's it's just a constant air volume through the diffuser. So. Uh, the terminal type that we select here is just a diffuser, and that's the only option we have. And this diffuser we select, there is no reheat with them. There are some specific diffusers that diffusers that might provide the reheating, but in this case, we just use the diffuser, no reheat. And uh, minimum airflow, again, this is related to the VAV terminal units for the constant you know, diffuser. We have a constant airflow based on the design. If you have additional heating in a specific area where you also have the air supply to, then we have to also activate this zone heating unit. By activating the zone heating unit, we can, tell, can consider what kind of zone heating unit it is. Do we have fan coil unit or do we have baseboard unit? If we have baseboard unit, for example, we can have uh, some other information provided in here. Uh, so in the baseboard, you can select whether or not you have a perimeter baseboard, which is electric resistant type, or it's hot water or steam, we can, we can select. 
for example, if you select the hot water, then you have to also say what are the schedule for the for that uh, perimeter radiator. If it runs, uh, you know, um, January, February, March, you just need to activate those uh, specific months where you're going to have the you know additional zone heating in addition to your air supply system. In this case, we don't have anything else. I just uncheck this. And once we do fill all of this tab, general system component, zone component, in the sizing data, it pretty much, because we set that as a computer generated um, data, uh, the software automatically selects, selects and sizes the, the system. So the system sizing happens here and you see the data that is uh, you know, calculated for, for this example. Uh, it calculates the supply temperature. So basically the supply temperature to the ductwork is considered to be 55 degree. And, and the total supply air rate sufficient to offset the heating and cooling load of this building would be 1,727.1 CFM. Ventilation air flow rate, which is the outdoor air that we need to bring into the space based on the total number of occupants in this building and, and the square footage for different occupancy is 359.9, we call it 360 CFM, outdoor air. For the heating mode, so it's 110 degree um, temperature is the air stream during the heating mode. And then that air, 110 degree air is supplied by the diffuser to the space it regulates the space temperature to 72 degree on the thermostat as we saw in the previous time. So because this outdoor air unit or um, rooftop unit doesn't have any central chilled water or hot water to it, so we're gonna neglect or ignore this section, but this is basically about the areas for, for the hydronic heating and cooling. And for the safety factor, I'm not adding anything, but there's always option to, to add some level of safety to, to the calculation for the sensible and latent cooling and also for the heating. And, and once we do that in the other tab, which is below the system sizing, there's a zone sizing. And zone sizing, as you can see, we have only one zone. And this is the total air supply rate that I just mentioned in the previous uh, you know, in the previous tab or on the system sizing tab, 1727.1. So in here is basically zone sizing data, zone sizing airflow method would be based on the sum of the space airflow rate. So the total airflow rate required for every space are summed up and um, makes this total number. And the methodology for this calculation is based on the individual peak space load. So peak space load uh, mostly happens uh, during the cooling mode when you have um, when you have to cool down the space and you want to provide maximum air to your space to to bring the temperature down. So um, the peak load or maximum air required for every space in the cooling mode are uh, summed up together, and that forms this number. There are other, uh, you know, option here. You can go with the, for the zone airflow sizing. We can go with the peak zone sensible load, but in this case, we just use the sum of space airflow rate. So that's that's some information about, um, you know, carrier hab software, calculation software for one rooftop unit. Uh, in the other tutorial, we will discuss about, um, you know, other type of systems variable systems or fan coils or other type that you can uh, you know size and select to the carrier hat so thank you very much for watching please don't forget to subscribe in this channel of the world of building design and also activate the notification button to see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted thank you